Welcome to Exploring the Arts. I'm your host, Ed Cauley, and today we're in the studio of Thomas Nicholas, Rockport's and uh, New England's well-known artist. Tom, welcome to Exploring the Arts. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Could you give us a little uh, background on the beginning in art, the schools you went to? And sure. I, uh, I was fortunate enough to have parents that were very uh, accommodating because when I was 14, I was ready to go into high school, and a fellow came by and he was, he was uh, trying to endorse students to go into trade school. I mentioned, I said, uh, where would uh, somebody go if they wanted to study art? And he says, well, you'd have to go to Meriden. When they put out the cards, I put Meriden Trade School on the card. Then I went home, and now I had to convince my parents <laughs> that I wanted the first reaction was, you don't, you're not going to high school? And I said, I really would like to study to be an artist. And it, uh, they, they were receptive. And I had an uncle that was interested in the arts, and mm -hmm. he also played uh, trombone in the big band era. So he was, he was kind of art educated. And he kind of convinced them that, he says, look, at, if you feel so strong about it, let them go. And the best thing I ever did. And after that, where'd you go? Well, just before graduating out of trade school, the teacher I had was a very, uh, he's very good at dealing with young young people, and every year he would have us uh, put put together work for the Seventeen magazine uh, uh, art competition. It was national. Mm -hmm. Well, in the senior year, you put together a, a portfolio, and you could apply for a scholarship. And I, I won one, and I went to the, uh, which is called the School of Visual Arts today in New York. Mm -hmm. Very, very fine school. And I had terrific teachers there. And uh, the original owner was Bern Hogarth, who drew Tarzan oh, wow. back then. Originally, you were more interested in uh, illustration then. Right? I had illustration teachers, but uh, I painted so much that I got one of the, my teachers to start <laughs> easel painting, which was very flattering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I, I always painted, even even uh, uh, when I was in uh, trade school. So what is the major difference between, let's say, illustrating painting and painting? What's it's the, getting what's the major closer difference? and closer, particularly in traditional art. Mm -hmm. Because Norman, <laughs> Norman Rockwell and people like that, they're getting mega millions for their paintings today. Unheard of. Mm -hmm. But I can remember going to art school myself and uh, they really frowned on his on him, on Norman Rockwell. Oh, yeah. They just felt yeah, it was just yeah. too commercial. Yeah. Uh, he, he, uh, uh, rose colored glasses. You yes, know. right. You know what Norm himself says? He says, I know America isn't like I painted. He says, it's like I wish it was. Yeah. Okay, so you go to school, you get your degree in painting. Uh, what's the next step from there? From there, I left school and I uh, I finished up. New York got to be pretty pretty tough, pretty mm -hmm. tedious. My father was working 18 hours a day to keep me in school. Anyway, uh, I left school and I got a job assembling typewriters <laughs> in Hartford, <laughs> Connecticut, West Hartford. Yeah. Uh, I did that for a year and. Uh, my, while I was there, my father passed, but I had all these paintings, and I wanted to keep my hand in drawing, so I enrolled in the famous art school, mm -hmm. just for drawing and illustration. So I had all these paintings piling up while I was assembling the damn typewriters, and uh, I wrote to the school, I said, I'm a student, I live 50 miles away in Middletown, they were in Westport, Connecticut, and I says, I would like an opinion on these. Well, I said, if you're a student, you live 50 miles away, bring them down. He says, we've no charge. We're glad to, glad to look at them. So I brought them down, and all I got was compliments. And Al Dorn, uh, you, you know him? Do you know that name? I'm familiar with it. Yeah, he was a powerful little stray. He started yeah. this school. Yeah. Anyway, at lunchtime, he was going through the lobby at the school, and he saw my work, and he says, who did these? And I says, I did. 
He says, geez, these are very nice. And uh, I says, if you really like them, I'd like to get a job here. I, I wanted to get out of that factory after a year of the damn typewriters. So he says, well, to be honest with you, he says, we are looking for somebody. You have to talk with a fellow upstairs. He's the guy that hires. And I went up, and uh, now here's the husba. And I, he, he says, we love your work. He says, but in all fairness, we got uh, 10 more people to look at. And, I, and uh, after we look at them, as, along with you, we'll make a decision. And I says, well, how long would that take? <laughs> and he says, he says, oh, I think about two weeks. <laughs> and I says, would that, he says, well, well, two weeks from today, would that be like on a Monday? And he says, yeah. And he says, we'll call you, you know, if you, and I says, well, would you know what time you might be finished during the day? And he says, well, I would think about four o'clock. He says, can I call you? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you hear that thing, yes. don't yeah. call us, I'll call you. And I figure that's, I'm dead in order with that, right? <laughs> so I called well, him and he says, make your plans, you got the job. And it made a big difference for me. You know, a lot of artists have a very difficult time selling themselves. I think they have to be have some desperation in their background. You, you know? think so? Yeah. yeah. You know, and they either survive that or they fight it, and they and they make something right, of themselves. Right. Right. I yeah. o I always say, the difference between a, a would be and, and a successful artist or any any profession is the ability the ability to manage disappointments. Because we did, all get it. Okay, we did, all get the disappointments. Do you ever doubt your own abilities? Oh boy, you know when I would, uh, and I was, it was a positive thing, mm -hmm. when I'd send to competitive shows like in New York and I get rejected or it, I wasn't accepted into a gallery and it was disappointing and I doubted myself for a minute, but then I thought, you know, uh, my background prior to that has been very positive, so it gave me gave me the strength to continue. Mm -hmm. And then things started to fall into place, and my God, I, I've done more than I ever expected to do as an artist. We've been all over the world painting. I mean, we, we've had you have, you've been to many places. Oh yeah, we know. Where have you been? To? We've been to Hong Kong, we've been to North Africa, we've been to England many times, we've been to Greece many times, all over Europe. We've been to Czech Republic, uh, and, and just in the last, Ten years, we're spending a lot of time in the, in the states, mm -hmm. California, all all over the states, and uh, been to Mexico, and been to South America, mm -hmm. and only the northern part, uh, Tunisia. That's the only part of Africa we've been to. Does does where, where you go does have an effect on your work? Oh yes. How so? Give me an example. Well, uh, the, I think the big stigma for most artists is that you get too comfortable and you start painting regional to the point where it, it gets, you lose the inspiration, mm -hmm. you, know, you start repeating yourself. So when you go away, you're doing things for the first time. It's very exciting. Now, I, not only that, but I, I even hate to look at films about where I'm gonna go, because I might run into the same place and it'll take something off of it. Oh, you want fresh eyes when That's you go right. there. That's right. I want to yeah. go around a corner and see a thing for the go first time. And be inspired by it. Oh, yeah. yeah, and get all excited and yeah. 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 How do you deal with, uh, say you're out in an afternoon and the light keeps changing on you, how do you deal with that? Or do you just lock it in right in the beginning or You what? know, the one, the one real advantage in retrospect, when I look back at my training, is that illustration taught me to do what I want with the subject. Let it inspire me, oh. but then well, you, you do whatever that it takes to make a better, to, to, to find out more about do yourself. Do what you want with the subject. Now that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, explain that a little bit better. Uh, you've got the subject there, it's dominating your visual plane, right, right. and you're saying do what you want with it. Yeah. Now do we all see that the same way, or do we all see it differently? You know, I, 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 I have mixed feelings about Picasso. I mean, guy was a genius, obviously, but I always think he, he's opened a lot of doors, but he's closed a lot of them. Mm -hmm. The one, one statement he made, he says, you want to paint nature? Take an empty frame and go out and look through it. 
Very good. <laughs> there it is. It inspired you. Now how are you going to make it your own? Yeah. Uh, do you try to paint in someone else's um, influence? No, I'm, sh I'm sure you've been influenced by a lot of painters, oh, right? That, that's, how do you, that's the how do you worst not thing you can do. Why is that the worst thing you can because do? Because Ted Kautsky, was, was, he, he was here in, in Rockport. I, I adored the guy. I mean, he, he did, and then when his books came out, I, I, I'd never seen watercolors like that. And I was influenced by him. Yeah. The hell, I was 15, 16, right, 17. Right. Yeah. If if you're young and not influenced, you know you got an ego that won't, you know, that's a little out of place. Mm -hmm. So you have to be influenced. There comes a time you got to grow up. And when I went to the famous artist schools to teach, once in a while I'd have a a la Kautsky picture, and they said, "Gee, that's so nice, Tom. It's too bad it looks like Kautsky." And I think, "Too bad? Isn't that a good thing?" <laughs> yeah. Then I realized self-expression. You got to be yourself. Win, lose, or draw. You got to be yourself. So when you look at another famous painter's work, you know the work just by the hand on the right, but it's by yes. you don't even need a signature under it. Right. And what you, is your signature? And you also uh, composition, if anything, design composition. Yeah, that that uh, that really turns me on, and that's what I look for when I'm e evaluating other artists. So when you get that frame up, that umpy frame up there, and you're looking at nature. And you're saying, well, maybe I should move this house over to the right a little bit. Oh. Uh, they, they might need a tree behind it. Would you do something Just, like that? Just yeah. The only thing you isn't have that cheating? The compromise, no. The compromise you have to make is that you title the picture any way you want, except the exact location. You don't say this is Jeffersonville or this is uh, Stowe, Vermont. Yeah. Don't do that if you've changed it. Yeah. Just say Vermont. Yeah. What's important to you is the painting. Yeah. Not the place so much as the painting. When somebody looks at a work of art, they say this painting tells me more about the artist than nature. Yes, it's nature. Nature was the excuse for the painting, but what it tells me mostly is how that artist feels about what he's looking at. You spend a good part of your life learning how to do that, but there comes a time when you have to be yourself and give your subjects more of yourself. In terms of influences, who were your influences growing up? In? Well, Ted Kotsky and uh, Ogden Pleissner, I liked him. Andrew Wyatt was right at right, right on top. I mean, mm -hmm. he was he was he was my biggest uh, not influence but inspiration. Right, right. Yeah, he. Uh, you know, you can see that he he relished nature, and but he knew how to convert it. There again, there's a good case. The guy was extremely realistic, but he converted it. I was going to say, Wyeth also had a son who paint, painted much yeah. like oh, You yeah. also have a son. Oh, yeah. yeah. How, how much influence have you had on him? Well, <clears throat> when he first started, uh, he wanted to do watercolors. I thought for sure he wanted to do oils because... You know, I started as a watercolor, and then in the middle of my career, I, I switched to oil. And uh, now he says, I want to do watercolors, and he was a very good watercolorist. And he painted like me. And as he got older, it bothered him. He says, you know, I made the big mistake starting out with watercolor because I painted like you. And he's, <laughs> so now he's himself, mm -hmm. and he, he's terrific. I, I understand mean, he is. Oh, he's wonderful. Yeah. Have you ever uh, painted a mistake? Oh yeah, sure. That's that's how you learn. I if I had an idea for a painting, let's say watercolor, I would start it and something would go wrong. I'd take it off, put it on the floor, start another one, use use the the better parts of what I thought. Mm -hmm. If that didn't work, another one. And until I got, I didn't want to let go of that. I I always felt like I got. Damn it, I'm not going to let. Uh, the idea beat me. Picture. Sometimes you have to work through it, don't you? You oh, yeah. start out and it's oh, not sure. coming out the way uh, you want, but something compels you. So what's what do you generally do? Get away from it, then come back to I it? Go have or a do cup you of stay coffee? right there and just bowl right through? I have a get cup of it? coffee. You take a walk. I do <laughs> yes, anything. I watch TV. Yeah. I just get the hell away from it. Yeah. yeah. If I'm working on a painting and I, I'm, I feel good about it, 
I try to leave that painting where I just can't help but get back to it the next day. If you, if you leave it with a problem, it doesn't go away overnight. What about, on the other side too, is can you overwork a piece? I, I know painters, they'll put on three, four, five coats of paint, one over the other. It's their style. Yeah. Uh, others, they have to paint more direct. Some painters paint more fluid, other painters paint uh, a bro what we call broken color. How would you describe your style? Impressionist. Well, I, uh, I'm a realist, mm -hmm. and I, I, if you had to, yeah, I hate to use the term, but they, uh, they call it a romantic realist, where I do interpret what I'm looking at and romanticize it somewhat. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's a good term, because at times I'm impressionistic, other times I'm more uh, two-dimensional. Mm -hmm. A little more semi-abstract, you know. It depends on the. On now the you you talk. We talked a little bit about oil painting and watercolors. Mm -hmm. What's the major difference between the two? In terms of approach. Well, it there there's a, a typical attitude that the the public has that a watercolor has to be done one shot, one term, and no over painting. Know this, know that. That's nonsense. You can do whatever you want with it. The no rules, huh? No, no. You can put white paint in. You can put. I mean, Sargent used to use the back of a candle with a wax to make a broken wash mm -hmm. on the paper. I mean, and uh, a lot of them use white paint uh, here and there. Uh, Wyatt did, and uh, Ogden Pleissner. Now going from watercolor to oil is is difficult because there's a whole there's a whole new a different approach too, isn't it? Yeah, the technique is so much different, mm -hmm. you know. And and with oil, you always feel like you can make adjustments a lot easier than with watercolor. But that doesn't mean you can't make adjustments with watercolor. I scrubbed out half a watercolor, you know, in order to put what I wanted into into the thing. Mm -hmm. Just wash it off, wash mm -hmm. it down. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. The main mm -hmm. thing is that final result that I was talking about earlier. You know, you either express yourself with this work or you haven't. Is there anything that you find really difficult to do in a painting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What would that be? Well, I, I asked this, uh, a very good lithographer, Stowe Wigginroth. I says, you know, you do everything so damn well. He was a good friend of Wyatt, mm -hmm. real technical painter. And I says, what's, it, what's the toughest thing you've experienced? He says, backwater in, 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 the, in the ocean. He says, what the hell do you do back there? Yeah. He says, it's always yeah. flat, yeah. it's always hor yeah. horizontal, you know. There's usually not that much color back there. There's very little motion. He says, that, that for me is the, the tough thing. For a long time, putting figures into a landscape was difficult mm -hmm. for me. And what I had to learn in that regard is those figures had to be in the character of the rest of the painting. If they look like they belong to another painting, they're out of place. Yeah. They got to fit. And I remember a, a, a fellow I worked with, a famous artist, <clears throat> We both like Roy Mason's work, and his work is very decorative, very blocky, wonderful watercolors. And I says, uh, Jack, I says, Roy Mason, you know, his figures are kind of wooden-y. He says, yeah. And he says, what are his trees like? And they're, they're wooden-y, and the buildings are wooden -y. <laughs> So I, <laughs> he says, they are in character. Right, right. And they belong there. And that, that, that was a lesson learned. Yeah. That, that was a good, good thing to hear. Mm. <clears throat> so when you go out and you add these figures to your work, like at a village scene you might have done, uh, the people aren't going to just stand there and pose for no, you. No, they should so, be in motion. They should be. So you lock them in your brain and you just... Uh, I, make, yeah. I make separate sketches yeah. of what yeah. they're doing, or yeah. walking or bending or, or mm -hmm. have a dog with them or whatever. Mm -hmm. or carrying a baby or a carriage, anything on a bicycle, yeah. anything that will give them uh, uh, activity in the, in the subject. Mm -hmm. Do you use photography at all? I use it in a big city when I was traveling a lot, where things were so congested, you know, you just were in the way if you mm -hmm. started. So you take photos 
and and the other option was uh, make drawings. For me, drawing is very important. Oh, yeah. this is, In fact, um, I'll tell you a story. When I was a kid, I used to, I still do love comic books because I am a cartoonist. And if the, if they weren't drawn well, I had no interest in it. <laughs> you sure. know? And I can remember looking at the pictures, and if I really liked the pictures, then I would go back and read the story. But you know? my fundamentals in, in, in the arts are inexcusable. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. I've been on yeah. an art juries, you know, uh, in Boston and New York and different places. <clears throat> and boy, if there's something out of drawing, bingo, it spoils it. Yeah. Or uh, with some artists, if it's not framed properly, I don't let the frame get my way. But mm -hmm. some artists, they say, oh, that frame kills that painting, they won't vote for it. Oh, but that's interesting. I think it's going too far. The frame kills the painting, they will if they won't vote for it. It happens. They're looking at the frame and not the work. It happens. Wow. Yeah. What's your reaction to uh, abstract painting, say something like Jackson Pollock, for example? I, I like Jackson Pollock. A I'm room, you a hot a time. room of them. <laughs> yeah, a room of them. I, I would start to to pick certain ones that I favored. Yeah. But I would feel like there's a uh, a repetition there that gets a little bit yeah. heavy. So why Why did you say Rothko over? Uh, no, Rauschenberg. Oh, Rauschenberg. 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 Well, yeah. He Rauschenberg was like a montage painter. Mm -hmm. He put all these different things together beautifully. And, and you could see he could, uh, he knew how to design, and he knew his his ability to select and put into certain uh, categories in a painting mm -hmm. is impeccable. It, it, well, he got twenty, thirty million a painting. Have you ever tried going that abstract route at all? <laughs> I I have I fooled around I fooled around with it uh, from time to time, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but sooner or later, you you paint to your nature. Yes, yes. and that's it goes back yeah. to self-expression again. Mm -hmm. When you look at a painting that really knocks you off your feet, understand what's doing that. Chances are, it's not something that makes you paint like that person. It it makes you want you to go to paint. What you yeah. what you learn is how to be in the, uh, that individual. Yeah, that singular in your in your concept of painting that's what you learn yeah. and that's the best best thing you can get from a painter the worst is you start to paint like them well listen tom i want to thank you for this really wonderful well, interview. i hope i hope we uh affect some attitudes out there <laughs> i think we did <laughs> thank you again. so thank you for asking me <laughs>